Hi, I'll walk through the last part of SPSS chapter six in the section on making inferences about sample proportions as promised from class today. So I wanna make sure that you get your SPSS program open and we'll be looking at an ordinal level variable in the GSS data set, which is about public opinion on or about domestic spying programs. So let's get started. So I've got my GSS data set open. And so we don't run into the same issue. I will weight my data. So data, weight cases. Um, WTSS is our weight for GSS. So I'll weight my data. And then I also wanna make sure that I go to edit options and that display names are alphabetical. So I am good. All right, so let me get started by looking at our instructions. So we're gonna be looking at this variable give in USA. So let me see. All right, so we wanna look at, we're gonna transform into a different variable to move this ordinal level measure with four possible responses into a binary variable of support and oppose. So again, we need to move this four category, category uh, excuse me, four category variable into a two category variable. So let's use what we learned before. And again, we're just following the instructions here from SPSS chapter six. So it looks like it wants me to, we'll name the new variable domestic spying. So follow the instructions in here. So let me find our variable give here I go give in F USA and then I'm going to call it again as described domestic spying and I can copy label its numeric values I can copy here to put over here in my label so I just copy and pasted this information. The label, uh, remember, is just the description of the new variable. So when we're transforming, we can write whatever we want in the output. So I'm gonna need to do old and new values, and it's telling me here how I need to recode. So existing values one through two go to one. So old value one goes to new value one, add, Old value two goes to new value one. You can't do two at a time. Remember when you transform into a new variable, you have to do them one at a time. And then to create my oppose category, I'm going to do existing values three through four get turned into zero. So three gets turned into zero, add, and then four gets turned into zero, add. And then I also want to do system missing, system missing, and system or user missing, system missing. So I'm all set to hit continue to create my new variable called domestic spying with support measured at the number one and oppose spying measured at zero. Okay, so I know that it worked. All right. So we're gonna do analyze descriptive statistics frequencies. Sorry, I know it's a little annoying to move this around. Okay, so we're gonna keep going. Analyze, bounce back down. Um, analyze descriptive statistics frequencies. We do this for any new variable when we recode just to make sure that we did it correctly. Um, and this one is not gonna be at the bottom, so it's gonna be under alphabetical for domestic spying. There's my new variable, I move it over, and then I can click on statistics to make sure that I get everything. You don't need to. 
you can see here it just breaks down. It doesn't, uh, the instructions didn't tell you to add all those statistics. I always do just to make sure I have an idea of what it looks like. So our output matches our book where we have 687 with a score of zero and then 667 with a score of one. All right. So according to these descriptives, a slight majority oppose. So we have 20 more people in oppose. That's zero. Oppose, 687, 20 above 667. So let me see. The result tells us when we calculate the 95% confidence interval, you could calculate this or run the SPSS. So let's see what our mean looks like. So we're going to go analyze descriptives, descriptives to look at the SE mean option, which is what we did above earlier today. So I'm going to find my variable, domestic spying, and then I want to hit options and click on SE mean to make sure that I get the standard error of the mean. So the standard error of the mean is 0 0.01359. That gives me information about the sample. The 95% confidence interval, remember, we can use SPSS analyze compare means one sample t-test. So we're going to do the confidence interval using this standard error of the mean. So analyze compare means one sample t-test. And again, this is what we did earlier in chapter six. And I get my results. So when we're looking at these results, uh, the results in my output match the output in the chapter. Um, you can see that we have significance because our P is small. Our P is 0 0.000. And small means that you, this level of P means that you can be 99 point, greater than 99.9% .9 confident that you have a significant result here. In this case, we are confident that the mean in the population is going to be between 0.4657 and 0.5190. This means that the mean, because this is our confidence interval, and 50% is in the middle, so we can be 99.9% .9 confident that the majority of Americans either support or oppose uh, domestic spying, which tells us nothing because, again, the comp confidence interval, interval values are in between 0 0.50. So we cannot be confident from our one sample t test or one sample test um, that more Americans either support or are against domestic spying. What we can do is look at specifically. Uh, the categories, and you have already learned how to do this, so I just wanted to review. Um, so we can look at Analyze Descriptive Crosstabs, and this comes from Chapter 4. So we're going to go under Analyze Descriptive Crosstabs, and we are going to use Figure 6-9 to do a testing of proportions across groups. So we're adding a t-test to the cross-tab. Again, I'll repeat, we are adding a t-test to our cross-tab from chapter four. So we are going to look at race here. So we're gonna look at the categories of people in according to their racial identity. We need to open, in number two, the cells button. And when we open the cells display, we need to compare the column proportions of the Z-test. 
and we're going to keep, we're also going to click percentages column and unclick observed. So we want to make sure that your crosstab cell display looks exactly as it does in figure 6-9 in order to add this test to our crosstab. So we're going to hit OK. And out we get results. And again, figure 6 9 is at the bottom of the results. I'm not sure why the order <laughs> is backwards. So let me scroll back up to look at the results earlier in the book. So the results in this table are the results of the statistic that you just ran in figure 6 9. So when you're looking at these results, you are comparing or testing the differences in proportions. Um, and you can see the instructions here tell you what you're doing. So let me make sure my results are correct. Yep. All right. So let me see. Do we have any? Um, looking at my results here. So, yep, it tells us right at the bottom. And the chapter says, as SPSS rather cryptically notes, um, the, these, this information down here is going to tell you whether there are differences at the 0 0.05 level. And that is a reference to the P level. So that is telling us that these categories do not differ significantly but we've got differences down here. So let's keep going. Groups with the A subscript do not differ from one another. So who is an A? A is other. So if you are not white or black, then there is not much difference, a significant difference in whether you support or oppose domestic spying. Groups with B subscript also do not differ from one another. So that means white black does not differ between oppose or support. But white black and other races do have a significant difference. So there is a difference between the other and the white and the black. Again, the subscripts kind of hide this, but we can see how the other for both oppose and support have a little A and white black have a little B. So the subscript is telling you who is similar and who is different. So the, the different is who is in A versus who is in B. So blacks and other races do have significantly different opinions about domestic spying. Um, so support for domestic spying is higher among blacks than it is among other races because this is B, this is A. And you could say similarly that support for domestic spying is greater for whites than it is for other races. It works the same way for opposition. Opposition for domestic spying is greater for whites than it is, actually it's less than white, less than for whites than it is for other, and this is a significant difference. So it doesn't matter whether you're picking the category of oppose or support in this case, because again, we're looking at a proportion of people in this case, according to their race and whether they support or oppose domestic spying. And I could run the same thing. Let me give you um, a quick example of what this might look like with a different category. So I could put race and then I'll go ahead and use, um, let me see, I'll go ahead and use our female category. Let me hit OK. So I've got different results here on the screen. So again, I ran a brand new crosstab with a test to tell me whether there is a difference between men and women and their support for domestic spying. And if you notice, um, let me try to make this a little bigger. If you notice, 
that little A across all four of these boxes tells me that the subscript is the same for both men and women in terms of their support for domestic spying. So there is no significant difference between men and women and there's in their support for domestic spying. I could do others, like what else do you think it depends on? Um, I don't know if there's a religion. There should be a, actually let's do kids, whether or not somebody has kids. Um, we could do the same thing. So it looks like there is a significant difference in support for domestic spying, depending on whether you have kids. So the way that I would interpret this output is that people who have kids are more likely to support domestic spying than do people without kids. Here, I would say people without kids are more likely to oppose domestic spying than people with kids. So there's something about having kids that is influencing your support or opposition for domestic spying. And this is a, this is a statistically significant difference. So again, this is a useful tool if you're looking at support or opposition for something based on category. Um, so I hope you see the difference between doing this type of test. And let me again scroll back up. So again, this is a section in chapter six about sample proportions. So this allows us to look at a dependent variable that has a nominal or ordinal level measure. So here we're looking at support, yes, no, and we want to know the difference in support uh, measured by a yes, no answer um, according to whether people have children, what race they are, what gender they are, etc. So you would use the cross tab with the additional test in order to run this statistic, which is very different than what you can do when you're using interval level data, where you can do a simple t-test of difference in means. Thank you.